Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Alex Sanginoff, and in the next 45 minutes, we would like to walk you through how we have redefined ServiceNow analytics strategy that we hope becomes yours. I almost had the pleasure of sharing the stage with my colleague, a friend, and my manager, Satish Molawalu. Unfortunately, he had a close family member pass away, so he couldn't join us. But I'll do my best to fill in his shoes. You're in good hands. So at the end of this presentation, what I want you to take away is primarily three things and how we have reimagined every single one of this. What analytics products to build, who to get involved, and how to execute at scale to run the company at, by, uh, driven by data. Just like many analytics teams, you might be uh, aware of this analytics maturity matrix, we started to assess ourselves. Where do we stand today in order to define what the future look like? And our, based on surveys across our cross-functional collaboration, we were somewhere between three and four. And in order to take it to the next level, we had to reimagine how we do things at scale. And one of the key learning lessons from this exercise was most analytics teams where they failed is they kept the analytics and reporting within mix or you know, separate, where it would have been better to coexist. Machine learning, AI should not be a separate thing. It should be embedded experience. And the second one was the data that we were serving was irrelevant to the users, to the users that we were serving it to. Now what's worse, being in the analytics team, that your product doesn't get, doesn't get used, right? We took it personal, and we redefined the team's purpose, connecting people to data. All right, so let's take a look at the root cause. We had, taking a step back, unbiased judgment, we had 400 plus dashboards in production Every single one of them offered different experience. Sometimes it had the same metric with two different logic, which in turn basically caused you know, a lot more havoc throughout the organization and mistrust in data. And that led us to ideation. How do we recreate, reimagine, and rebrand the analytics team? That goes you know, beyond just, oh, just the BI, you know, they just you know, push things into production. So those who are in IT, stop being such an IT. Just a fair warning. So the lessons learned from this was pretty simple. If we only answered top five uh, questions that our employees were looking for, if we only gave them a starting point across all the dashboards, if they only could trust the numbers they were seeing in the dashboard, it was like nirvana. This, the problem that we were after was so simple, but yet you know, we com made it complex ourselves. Also, we wanted to measure ourselves. We wanted to run our IT like a business. And we wanted to measure our own success, super simplified way. And we wanted it to run like a news website, where we only measure ourselves through three metrics, usage, monthly active users, how many employees use our dashboards on a monthly basis, and are they happy using it? If they're not happy, they're not coming back. And are we providing the business value to support the company's growth? If not, impacts the satisfaction, which then impacts the usage. So, we exited 2018 with 2,400 monthly active users. And we signed up for an OS goal, or SNAP goal, to double that number by end of this year. And we are so far on track in meeting our goals month after month. Now, at the end of the day, every team member is aware what is success look like for our analytics team because so simple, it's just a hashtag, smiley face, and a dollar sign. 
instead we celebrate every small win with our healthy food, and the highlight goes to the baker who <laughs> caked it, you know, with the exact screenshot of the dashboard. Hats off. Now that takes on some special skill. All right, now that we reimagined how we build analytics products, how do we communicate it? How do we raise awareness to our users, to the employees? Well, desktop experience is a must. Team spaces, we wanted to utilize all the TVs that we have around the office to communicate the important metrics for that department. So they, it raises awareness, which in turn will lead them into, into you know, using it via desktop or mobile. Alerts, based on specified criteria, how do we enable that push and pull uh, experience to employees? And mobile is very critical to have data in the hands of our employees, especially to our sales reps and or, you know, marketing executives. As they are meeting the customers, they need to have a pulse on the data. And finally, making those data points available through API. So other platforms like CRM or any other platform that can, uh, that can utilize these data points can make use of it. In order to enable all of this, we started reimagining the analytics framework. This framework, we wanted to trace the, from the source the data gets generated down to the hands of our employees where it's being consumed all the way through. How it, trans, how it travels through each and every point and have clear visibility and alerting capability anytime anything should fail. Now, this, ladies and gentlemen, will enable us in creating a knowledge graph, which in turn, every dashboard is connected to one another, just like a website. And at the end of the day, all you need is three types of dashboard. No more, no less. Let me explain. Persona-based dashboard. Every company, everyone in the company, every role has a personalized dashboard. It's one template, one style sheet, different metrics, relevant to them. The second is activity-based dashboard, cadence-based dashboard to support quarterly business reviews, forecasts, planning seasons, you name it, relevant to your company. And the third is entity-based dashboard. Account, opportunities, tickets, lead, contact, campaign, you name it, all connected to one another. So we borrowed the idea from Wikipedia. The reason is they sold it for the entire world whether I search for, let's say, Portugal, you do it, someone else from other part of the world, we all have a starting baseline. Based on our level of interest, we click on hyperlink, takes us within context, takes us to another page, takes us another page. If you wish to come back, well, you have that choice as well. It should be no different. All right, enough with ideation. Let's get some, our hands dirty. So this is an example of our customer dashboard. Uh, based on our company's need, you know, our priority lied you know, among uh, customer, and we needed to solve that ASAP. So uh, as you can see here, within a customer dashboard, it's a long form, long scroll for a reason. I'll cover it in a second. Whenever you see a sales rep name, you click on it, it takes you a sales rep persona-based dashboard. You see a product mix, you, you see a product name, you click on it, it takes you a product dashboard. You see a partner, it enables you to a partner dashboard, and so on and so forth. And you know, with all the other you know, detailed and drill down capabilities. So before we even uh, got our hands dirty, we need to set some standards, style sheets, with key important information to introduce into every single dashboard. So a uh, key, key metric you know, here I want to highlight is anchor metric. Every, everyone at the end of the day care about one metric and one only, and that is becomes the anchor metric. If you recall your own experience, why do we check the stock market every single day? 
because of that green and uh, red indicator. If that, imagine if that was, wasn't there. How would you know whether it was good or bad? Right? All right. So, uh, now that we reimagined, established some standards, guidelines for the entire company, now we had to show, show it. So the starting point would be an index page where you can view group of, uh, group of accounts with respective perspectives. Perspectives offers different type of metrics per different role and for different purpose. The default is going to be, at least for us, was a sales view because sales wanted to have pulse on the data when they log in based on their level of security, they will be shown only the account that are assigned to. And if you switch the perspective into, which is the sc second screenshot, into formula for success, now you're looking at your accounts for, through the lens of, is this account successful or not? And simple color coding, green, yellow, uh, red, basically indicates which account needs more attention than the others. So let's take a look at the first account. Uh, now this is a separate, a single account-based dashboard. <clears throat> so the story here goes, all, everything that the account does, a quick overview, how much business they do with ServiceNow, uh, a product mix, what they currently have uh, bought, what's in pipeline, and, and so on and so forth, all the financial details. Followed by a storytelling through timeline, and the account story section. From that on onwards, it goes into a uh, timeline where the timeline is fixed, so you have that context that, hey, if this account started with us in 2015, that 2015 stays for you. And you can see every single activity onwards after that. Now, keeping entity-based dashboard, in this case, account or customer dashboard separate from the index page is primarily uh, for integration purposes. Say, if you want to connect, if you want to uh, connect account dashboard from CRM, you can simply pass the account key and land directly into this dashboard. Similarly from other accounts. Again, going back to the knowledge graph, right? How do we make sure the dashboards communicate to, to one another? It would have to be its own, but yet connected. And further, uh, the dashboard offers, uh, talks through you know, their usage, implementations, when it was kicked off, uh, how well they are you know, doing on NPS journeys or whatnot. At the end of the day, we want to make sure the data and the story is consistent. And further, <clears throat> below, as you can see, the section breaks. Now we're talking about customer for success. Where does this account need attention in order to be successful? And finally, alerts embedded within the dashboards all within the fingertips of our sales rounds. A separate page, a dedicated page within account dashboard, <clears throat> telling them and indicating how many alerts that the sales rep, in this case, or account rep needs to act upon and what those alerts are. All right, so, yeah. How often is the alerts updated daily? Based, yes. The entire dashboard, the entire data sets update on a daily basis. And there are times when we have live connections as well. All right. <clears throat> so part of uh, aligning your analytic strategy into the vision of the company. Again, everything that we're going through, you know, may be cliche but the way how you do it, how you engage others, how you bring everyone together is key. And the first was, you know, we always started with our own team. Going from project-based execution into product thinking. That makes a huge difference in the life of a developer, data engineer, data scientist, right? Once you push the production point, once you push the code into production, you're not done. You're just getting started, right? Uh, and that, is uh, done you know, through agile execution. And establishing operating plan is a must, because otherwise, once you publish it, no one will come. 
because they don't know how to use it. They have no use case. They don't know when they should use it or how they should use it. So this is where a critical partnership with stakeholders and a business sponsor is a must and it's key. And finally, make sure you have a rockstar enablement plan to make a big splash, testimonials, uh, pilot, you know, success stories who have, you know, used your pilot, who have contributed, you know, great feedback to making this product awesome. All right. So to put it into perspective, we represent the core analytics team. And our best friends are embedded in our analytics team. We work with every single one of them. And our business sponsor, in this case, are the users. So to put it into the prior slide, the operational plan would have to be owned by the users. Because they are closest to the business, they know when this particular data point should be used and how. The enablement plan would have to be owned, at least in our case, is owned by embedded analytics teams. They know how to communicate. They know their users. They are closer to business. So we, the analytics team, can stay focused on building the awesome analytics products. So, going beyond your comfort zone. <clears throat> I'll leave you with uh, influencers in your organization. Their job title usually starts with chief and ends with officer. <laughs> okay? Remember that. Uh, the higher you get your uh, analytics strategy aligned at a C level, the message will trickle down. You only need one, just one, to create a FOMO, fear of missing out. Because one, they can, you know, run around and influence the others. And that's what we have done. We partnered with our chief revenue officer, as well as, you know, customer success, to partner with them. And they rallied, you know, the sales reps. And the sales rep, you know, provided a great feedback in making this successful. All right. So once you have all of them together, then you got to tell them where to go and how to access the dashboard. Again, we had to run it like a news website. Our analytics homepage is built on our own ServiceNow platform. And everyone will, will see all the dashboards that are out there. No hiding. Just because you don't have access doesn't mean you cannot see it, at least the name, right? And if you don't have access, you click on it, it uh, triggers the access workflow. And once you're approved, you can come back and you have it. So, and also, whoever is doing an awesome job, we can put their ad, ad out there. Any awesome new dashboard that's coming out, it's another way for us to keep that message, the you know, subliminal message, you know, coming, going. <clears throat> All right, so what, uh, additional ways that you can raise awareness and inform and engage the community is establishing analytics uh, community, be it you know, online, in person, or whatnot, just so that you know, people can come together to share you know, thoughts, lessons learned, or what have you. So in our case, we do have Facebook-like uh, analytics at now community, uh, and that's where you know we share all the great uh, in-person sessions. We broadcast it live, so those who cannot you know join us, they have the uh, they have the ability to replay. And also, we have outside in perspectives who come and speak from different industries that are that is relevant to the analytics world. Workshops and hands-on uh, sessions to train people how to access data or how to use the dashboards. And also, my favorite is analytics hackathon. Nothing beats that, right? Uh, there is so much innovation that happens. And the best hackathon is the ones or other ones that make it to production. That is the benchmark. Just because you hacked doesn't mean you're done. Again, it goes back to the product thinking. Once you build it, it has to make it to production. All right. So, what does the future, I know we're a little bit going ahead, uh, which is great, we'll have you know, plenty of time for Q&A. Uh, what does the future hold for us, at least at ServiceNow, 
Now the future for us is marrying analytics and workflow together. Being, you know, with our humble and hungry uh, spirit, being the best analytic digital workflow platform on the planet, we wanted to marry analytics. And how can we best use the two together? So presenting the data, the alerts, all these, you know, uh, the analytics products is one thing. But how do you make sure those who are using it have a clear understanding of what workflow should be triggered, what is next step, essentially, how the alerts are being treated, and who has taken the action? So take an example of a sales manager. They're responsible for their district. They see alerts being triggered for their accounts. Now, all they have to do is just come to the dashboard and check the status. And the moment, once we close the loop, that, hey, my, oh, my sales rep already taken action on that alert. They don't even have to pick up the phone or email. Not to confuse you, though, there are three steps in analytics and workflow. The first is analytics with workflow, activating the workflow straight from the dashboard. And the second is analytics in workflow, guiding the workflow itself at, ev at each and every decision point which way to go. And finally, analytics on the workflow, also known as process mining. We can see, can this workflow be improved? If yes, well, we make that recommendation to the workflow and we optimize the workflow itself. And that is how we run the modern, and that is how we become a modern company run by data. All right, so just to recap, there are nine essential things that we have gone through. First is establishing a knowledge graph with consumer-grade experience that has security top in mind, where machine learning is embedded part of the, uh, the consumer-grade experience, where the trust in numbers is unshakable. And priorities, 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 I'll reveal the secret again. You have to have someone with a job title starts with chief and ends in officer. Get them, you know, at least you just need one. And establish a community where people feel they belong. And finally, make sure your measurement, success measurements are super clear for every team member to know. And it has to be human centric. Why are you doing it? So why did we do it? because we wanted to, to, to balance the scale, to connecting people to data. And if anyone here is saying, oh, you know, I've been there, done that, you know, you're wasting your time, we have good news. We are hiring. Thank you very much. Uh, and...